talking about I was talking about Final Fantasy VIII, and I was talking about how like people always shit on characters like Squall and uh, Titus because they only ever remember how they were at the beginnings of the games. Whenever like like Titus is like a legitimately like cool character that showed a lot of growth yeah. by the end of the game. Like he is like a legitimately like heroic individual. Like by the end, and right. er- everybody just chooses to fucking ignore that and be like, nobody laughs weird. <laughs> like, uh, well, first uh, thing that uh, that scene that scene has its own fucking thing. You ever hear the uh, the English voice actor for Titus explains his thought process and the direction he was given in that scene? And he has there's a YouTube uh, video. I feel about like. It. I feel like John sent that to me once, like when he have. first started. So when he first started speedrunning. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty on board with Final Fantasy X, and I'm like, I'm also really on board with the Star Wars prequels. But like, anytime people <laughs> say stuff like Anakin's dialogue was supposed to be awkward, he's a teenager that has no social skills. I'm just like, okay, but what if it's actually just bad writing? Like, it could. Be you can't. That. You can't explain all of it away like that. Like. So sometimes the writers need to need to take it. They need to be held accountable for the shitty things that they've done. Yeah, like it's uh, definitely that, possible that it's not. Wow, well, these are some fucking it's garbo that paradigms. It's just badly written. I, I messaged you the the video. You might have already seen it. Okay, it was from 2016, so it's been around for a bit. Whoever decided on these paradigms needs to be shot. So while we're waiting to start up, Cheeto, I'll give you yeah. like my little quick spiel that i've given tom and george already on kind of like the the guiding general principle that i approach slay the spire with oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah um, thank you i'm gonna get a beer while you do that but i'll be so back. like i think the number one thing that like guides everything and this is something that i think people who are coming from games like magic actually have a disadvantage here in games like Magic and Hearthstone, like a lot of times the way that you build a deck is like, I have my thing that I do to win, and my deck is all about like facilitating that thing. Like it's all based around your supposed win condition. Kind right. Of. That's not really how Slay the Spire works because like in Magic, you always are playing like another player who is playing by the same rules that you are. And that's not really how Slay the Spire works. Like you progress through enemies that don't always obey the rules and they they change up so much between the start of the run and the end of the run like the kinds of things you need your deck to do evolves a lot over the course of a run so i the the biggest thing that i did to improve in slay the spire was get out of the mindset like i think the 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 classic example is like playing silent going into a run and being like i'm making a poison deck where i like get noxious fumes to make poison and then i make a bunch of dexterity and i block for a billion while i let the poison work like that's just not really how you play slay the spire well what you do is you go into a run and you know okay here are the threats i'm facing now here are the threats i'm facing soon and these are the things that i've been offered like how do i use these things to address the threats coming up shortly and that might okay. end up being poison. That might end up being making a billion block with dexterity, but it might not be. Like you need to build your deck to face those threats as they come up. And so you just you end up kind of making these big bloated decks that look really ugly to people who are used to constructed deck builders, but by taking those cards that like are good now and maybe not great later the rewards you get like if you can take all these bloat front loaded damage cards that are great in act one and let you take three elite fights those cards that are in your deck taking up space later are more than paid for by like the three relics that you got from those three elites and the potions they dropped and the higher chance of rare cards and higher gold drops like that's how you get really strong in this game because you only have 50 floors to make a deck that can win the run so you need to be getting everything you can out of every floor on the way. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely say that's not how I've been approaching Slay the Spire. Yeah, and I think that effect is, like, magnified on Ironclad the most of the four. And that's because of the prevalence of exhaust in Ironclad. Like, we did talk about that. Yeah, like, literally one out of three cards on Ironclad have the word exhaust written on them. They either exhaust themselves or they exhaust other cards. So a lot of winning Ironclad decks 
are these like bloated 40 card monstrosities that just like they have they don't have a theme they're just like yeah i took these five cards because they let me beat elites in act two and i took these five cards because they let me beat elites in act one and these are for hallway fights and these are for bosses and it's just like it's just a pile of cards that do things for different fights but you also have like two copies of true grit plus that let you exhaust whatever card in your hand you want so you just kind of like have a pile of stuff and you exhaust the cards that are not good in the fight right now and you leave yourself with the cards that are good for the fight that you're facing right now, you know? Yeah, I think it's going to take me a little bit of time to kind of really like get that, but that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, like if, if there was like a one-sentence TLDR, it's like don't build your deck with the end game in mind build your build your deck with the like with the um, the immediate or semi-immediate threats in mind yeah okay but you're gonna have to teach me those exhaust synergies because that those were mostly uh staying away from them when i played well so Uh, like i didn't even get into the exhaust synergies i'm literally just talking about like you can take this pile of cards ironclad style of deck that just like it has some cards that are good for hallway fights, some some cards that are good for bosses, some cards that are good for elites. Like, you just have all these cards that are don't make any sense together, and you just exhaust the ones that you don't want in the fight you're in right now. So that's that's like the baseline level of why exhaust is good in Ironclad because it just has so many exhaust cards. But the the level on top of that is cards like so feel no pain is a power that gives you block every time you exhaust a card. And that card is fucking ridiculous because, like, you you put that in play and then you design your deck to make it exhaust a lot of cards. And it's like, there, there are runs where I'll get one Feel No Pain and lean into exhaust synergies. And it's like, I don't take any other block cards. That's my entire mitigation engine and it gets there. It's insane how much you can do with it. Um... There's exhaust synergies like there's an there's a relic called Charon's As- Charon's Ashes that does damage to every enemy when a card exhausts. Like if you get oh I've that, seen that it's... I've seen that that YouTuber you showed me I've seen him like do some disgusting things with that. Oh yeah yeah that card that that relic is insane on Ironclad. And so like particularly with Ironclad because you're gonna be leaning into this like big bloated deck you really, really want to take elite fights because getting those relics, like if you have a 40 card deck, adding a 41st card doesn't really affect you that much because you're only going to see that card like one in nine turns. But a relic, you don't have to play it. You always have it in play. So like if you're going to be making this big deck, you really, really want to be getting every relic possible because those affect you much, much more than a card does. So uh, Tom, I'm uh, 22 hours in. And 48 minutes, and I just got to the very first uh, available side quest in this game. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. I'm I just, just wanted to point that out because that's just funny as fuck. Final Fantasy 13 right now. Like, can we <laughs> not have this on the screen? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting out. Don't worry. Does that still lock at 720p? Yeah, probably. Who even knows anymore? I'm just on a Final Fantasy kick, and I'm willing to. I'm willing to play all of them. Are you trying to suggest that Final Fantasy XIII railroads the player down certain options and doesn't give them freedom to choose anything? I, I don't know if I'd call it a rail. I don't know if I'd call it suggesting or just flat out saying that's exactly what it does. I know that the ten remaster was fucking locked at thirty FPS or whatever, and I was pissed about that. The ten remaster sucks balls. Yeah. Also true. Uh, let me see about hmm, applications go live. Okay. All right, we in there, guys. Let's do this. Hold on. It just it just loaded my Xbox 360 controller config, and I'm, I'm I ain't about that life. I was like, you're gonna play with a controller. So I do like I, I do like uh, playing on my uh, my Switch a lot. There should be no excuse to ever lose this run after we won that defect run last time. <laughs> that, I, I, I should grab the VOD so much. here. Yeah, I want to I rewatch that eventually. I'll cut up the vod right now while while we're doing this. Okay. So, how I, are you guys been doing I've this? Seen... Is, it, is it literally just like standard climb? Yeah. We can I do ascension one if you want. We can do non ascension. Honestly, like it doesn't make a lot of difference to the. I'll, I'll do ascension one just because. 
We've been cool. playing on Ascension Zero, but uh, if you want to play on Ascension One, play on Ascension One. It doesn't I, uh, really make a difference, York. honestly. Like, arguably, Ascension One is better for the player because more elites, you have more options is, for relics. Yeah. yeah, like it gives you more chances to get strong. You go fat with strength. Uh, okay. Um, did you say you were going to record it? And if so, are you already recording? I am recording. Yes, I've been recording okay, cool. since I gave my <laughs> spiel. So excellent. We're just going to have to okay. watch some Final Fantasy Thirteen. He'll. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll love that. Okay, let's do this. Uh, I see you made it to Act 1 boss in your last run, at least. Okay, yeah. so before I pick this, I always... So I'll just like look at the options, and then look at the map, and then come oh, back and make the decision. So remove a card from your deck, honestly, is like pretty weak at the start. Um, the Ironclad deck is like very heavily skewed in favor of offense at the start. So, so you usually can what do you something want like remove right? a strike and make yourself more defensive, but honestly on floor one, a strike is like not a bad card. You you need that front loaded damage. Act one is heavily, heavily emphasizing how well you can front load your damage. Because um so your three elites, there's the gremlin knob that um he does like too much damage for this early in the game, and he gains strength every time you play a skill. So he's right. just a damage race. Um, Lagavulin, same thing. Like Lagavulin does up stupid amounts of damage per turn, and every three turns will debuff your strength and your dexterity permanently. So that's just just a front loaded damage race. And then the three Sentinels, um, the way that they attack, they, each one attacks every other turn, but the outside ones are synced together. So you're taking double damage every other turn. So you want to burst down one of the outer ones as fast as as possible so that one also heavily reloads front loaded damage so or rewards front loaded damage so you want to just like act one is about getting front loaded damage cards to the point where you can kill elites and then starting to transition into mitigation and scaling so removing like there's not really anything in our deck we want to remove right now we like all the cards we have right now so it would um, either be the gold or the HP, and I did notice there's a shot pretty soon. Yeah, so let's look at the, like, I always look at the elites in the act first and see what path can I take that has the most elites on it, and then, like, is it a viable path? So I can go, so I can go, like, fight, fight, shop, fight, mystery, elite, bonfire, elite, treasure, and that gives yeah, me so like. You can get a three act elite out of that. You can, can get three, get and if I'm really low, if you've if it's gone badly. Yeah. Um, well, if it's gone badly, like, you know, I can like also rest here instead yeah, of reading a card. Yeah, you can get a rest after the first elite if you're not too strong at it. Um. <laughs> so the way that encounters work in each act is the first three fights. And this includes, like, if you get a random fight from a question mark, this comes out of this this rule as well. But your first three fights are pulled from an easier pool of encounters, and then everything after that is a harder pool. So you really want to get three, exactly three fights before your first elite. You don't want to go up to a fourth because you're pretty likely to take damage at that point with, until you've gotten stronger. Unless you've so gotten, that could like, be, like, fight, really fight, job, fight, Yeah, I think that's I think that's a pretty reasonable path to take. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get the gold then. Yeah, so, I think I'm getting that shot. gold is the way to go here. I basically okay. never trade boss relics on Ironclad because the six HP per fight is so strong. Um, so this guy can scale up his strength quite well. He gives himself um, a, a strength boost every few turns or so. So, um, and he can get himself quite a bit of block. So I think for this guy, honestly, it's pretty worth just um, like throwing all of your damage on the table. We do get to heal the six at the end of the fight, so even though we take eleven, like we we get to sustain ourselves back up quite well. Well, so I'm gonna just, restart um, with the higher frame rate. I would and just everything. throw all the strikes down here. Okay. Uh, I was cutting the video. Sorry. Actually, uh, did, this I, is the did first I miss time. anything interesting? No, uh, he was just explaining. Fight yet. <laughs> yeah, he was just explaining stuff to me. I uh, I had like, to restart my Slay the Spire because it was at like seventeen twenty or some dumb shit. Act one is like pretty linear in the amount of damage it does to you. There's no enemies that do anything that surprising or crazy. So 
the more experience you get, it's pretty knowable, like walking into each fight based on your deck, how much damage you're going to take. So act one in general is very heavily based on like trading your health for getting stronger as much as possible. So this is a, this fight is a good example of that where like we pretty much just throw all of our damage down and like, yeah, even though we heal six, like we're going to be, we're going to be net down on health, but we're not going to die by the end of that first elite unless things go horrendously badly for us. And then there's a campfire there that we can heal up if we need to. And that's okay. Like if we end act one on one HP, that's optimal play. Like we've used our health as a resource quite well because the thing you need to know, like act two is just a fundamentally unfair bullshit spike in difficulty over the end of act one. So you need to take every possible chance you can to make your deck stronger in act one to be ready for it. Generally, like I would say, oh God, I would I would even say like upwards of sixty percent of my runs end in Act Two if they die. I would say like thirty percent of runs end in Act One, sixty percent in Act Two, and ten percent in Act Three. If you've survived Act Three, you're probably set. All right, if you've survived Act Two, you're probably set for three. Okay, got that. And okay, good. Okay, yeah, so you're thinking just throw down all strikes. You gotta turn the stream back on, buddy. Uh thought I did. Obviously I did not. Alright, so screen blah blah blah. There we go. Alright, cool. Yeah, so just just strike him, take the eleven. And I mean I'll get a lot of that back, so he's doing seven. So Bash is really, really good, and that's going to be a really high in priority upgrade for us. Vulnerable makes further attacks do 50% more damage. We're a very heavily offense scaled deck right now. Like we only have four defense; the rest is all offense. So getting a getting vulnerable down off Bash is is super important, especially for stuff like Gremlin Knob and Lagavulin. So I probably still would I still want to use this in this fight? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would I would bash and then strike here. That's a new nine damage. So next turn I'll kill him unless I get like a super unlucky draw. Yeah, which yeah. I actually we're definitely don't even. Him here. Yeah, I, I don't even think I had enough blocks, and then I'll get my six back. We got a region potion. Which is nice. Um. Okay. So keeping in mind what we're trying to build our deck to do right now, we want to build. Um, we want to build our deck to beat these Act 1 Elites that really heavily reward front-loaded damage. So, looking at these three cards, Battle Trance is like a fucking great card, but drawing more cards right now, like all of our cards kind of do the same thing, so we don't care that much about drawing additional cards right now. And in particular, we only have three energy, and the starting Ironclad deck is pretty energy heavy because everything either costs one or two, so like we're not playing all the cards in our hand anyway. So we don't care that much about drawing more cards right now. Twin Strike and Carnage are both great. Um, Twin Strike scales a little bit better into the end game because if we're getting a card like Demon Form or Limit Break that's scaling our strength up, that hits Twin Strike twice because it's two hits. But um, Carnage is like really good right now. Um, like that'll just blow up a lot of hallway fights and the ability to just like front load 20 damage in one card. Um, that kind of ensures us against any turns where, like, let's say we're playing against um, Gremlin Knob, and like, we draw, like, uh, like three of our defends and then a strike and a strike. That's really unfortunate because like we really don't want to play any of those defends. We just want to pump out damage, but we've got an energy just sitting there not doing anything towards our offense. Carnage is like a really good way to guarantee that we're gonna able to sink our all of our energy into offense on the turns that we want it here in Act One. So I would take Carnage for sure. Okay. That's I've never seen that card before. Um, it's also um, really notable against Lagavulin when he debuffs your strength. Twin Strike gets hit twice by that because it's two hits. So you're essentially losing two damage off Twin Strike when you get debuffed, but Carnage only loses one. So you're still getting 19 damage output instead of like Twin Strike goes from 10 to 8. Would I want to uh, Carnage the Acid Slime and then like strike the Spike? Yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, because that just also mitigates some damage, so I'll heal back up a little bit more. Uh, and that's, okay, the block one, just and he's not attacking, out. so boom. And we should kill here. You got licked, bruh. Ugh. Yeah, I think that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that'll definitely do it. And we're like, we're already 
almost back to full health. Um, okay, so Warcry well, is like not a very good card, just generally speaking. There's some Which one isn't? combo decks that can kind of do a thing with it. But, um, oh, the one on the right, Warcry. Yeah. Oh, Warcry, okay, okay. So, like, if you just think about it, a card like that would be a lot better in Magic because you're only drawing one card per turn and you're holding on to your, your hand. But in Slay the Spire, you draw five cards a turn and you discard the ones you don't use at the end of the turn. And, like, you get to reshuffle your deck back in every time you've drawn through it, which you don't in Magic. So, like, in Warcry, with Warcry there... You didn't have. You could have just skipped instead of adding Warcry. So like you're, if you're imagining the card you want being one deeper into your deck because you've added Warcry, the fact that it draws you one card is like it's just net even with the fact that you. Oh yeah, because if, if you had just not had it, then you would. Right. Have if you had just not had Warcry, you would have already been at the card you cared about. And then the fact that you have to put a card on top of your draw pile means that, like, if it's if the card you want is too deep, you've now put another card in the way of getting to it. Okay. So it's just not really that good. Um, Sword Boomerang is, like, it's very strong if you've got strength scaling. And if you're fighting Gremlin Knob and Lagavulin, 9 damage for 1 energy is pretty good. But it's pretty bad against the Tri-Sentinels because you can't control where that damage goes. Um, Thunderclap is probably the best of the ones we've got here. There's a couple of fights here in, in Act 1 that care about AoE, and it's really good at taking... So um, the Tri-Sentinels have artifacts charges that... Oh yeah, it'll us. remove all their artifacts. Yeah, you can get all the artifact off of them so that your bash will actually apply. And so Thunderclap, Thunderclap would here. let me, like, when on a lucky draw, I could apply Vulnerable and smack him with, like, 30 damage. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Alright, so now we're shopping. We have 231. Um, okay, so generally speaking, I always look at the relics first because relics just over the course of a run have a lot more impact than an individual card does. Um, oh, wish I had enough for Unceasing Top. I like that card. No. So Unceasing Top can be good in combo decks, but it's really bad in our deck because our deck is very energy heavy. Oh, actually, because yeah, okay. of the fact that we took the, um, the Carnage we're even more energy heavy right now because we have another two cost card. Mm -hmm. We're never playing all the cards in our hand. It's just not happening. So that would never ever proc. That Oricalcum though, um, six block on turns that you don't play block, that is amazing against Gremlin Knob because when you play block Oh, because you can't do it anyway. Yeah, like he's gaining Their strength. Skills. That's just mitigating six for us on turns that we don't play block. And we have very few mitigation cards as it is anyway. So I would absolutely buy that Oricalcum. And then up oh, is can't. like stupidly good at what we're trying to do in Act 1. It gets us more damage. Like, it's good damage. It, it mitigates for us in, in while being an attack. So, like, it reduces Gremlin Knob's damage but doesn't give him strength because it's an attack, not a skill. And then so we should still do that. further then. attacks better. It's also a and super it, high-priority upgrade because it makes it go too weak and too vulnerable so it actually carry over uh -huh. between turns. So okay. I, will um, I will... Yeah, I'll pick up that. Okay. I would say that, like... I feel like um, people coming from other deck builders highly overvalue card removal. Like, card removal is good, but just generally speaking, I think people are way too into removing cards. Um, it's like it's good to get cards out of your deck and make them uh, more streamlined, but you know, if it's if you're getting to buy a relic or a good card instead that lets you win a fight or take an extra elite, like that's much more impactful than removing card is. Um, okay, so you got a couple of good options here. Um, let's look at our deck real quick. Top right. So like we've added three front loading damage cards and like they're pretty good. So honestly like this deck is pretty solid at fighting elites right now in act one. So I think we we probably want to add ourselves a little bit of mitigation. Like, we're very heavily skewed in the offense direction right now. And Perfected Strike just scales, like, terribly into the late game. Because it doesn't yeah. do anything except damage. Like, we like our we like cards like Uppercut that do other things as well. So okay. I would go for the Shrug It Off or the Power Through. Um, power Through obviously is a lot more block, but it does get you those wounds. Um, if we are getting to lean into... Um, some exhaust synergies, but you can't. We can obviously exhaust those wounds. The thing about Shrug It Off, though, um, so 
Our deck has a lot of... It's, it's really, really good at spending all its energy on offense. It's pretty bad at spending all of its energy on defense on turns that we care about blocking. So, like, if we really care about blocking, Shrug It Off is good because not only is it good block for its energy, but it's also good at drawing us another card, which might be a block card as well. Because there's a pretty good chance it's like, ah, shit, we need to block for 20. I only have, like, 10 block worth in my hand. So Shrug It Off is, is pretty good for that. Honestly, like, I think the choice between Power Through and Shrug It Off is, like, pretty 50-50. You could really I think go with either one. If it was, I, like, yeah, if I was going to make the call, I would go with Shrug It Off. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Shrug It Off. Okay, yeah, it's a great card. Shrug It Off is fucking amazing. I think right. that, like, below Ascension 15, like, you literally cannot add too many Shrug It Offs to your deck. If you get offered Shrug It Off on every floor and you take it on every floor, I think that still wins the run. It's such a good okay. card. So here, would I, would I want to do the mystery one, since I'm trying to get only three yeah, encounters yeah. before minute? We're trying to go to those two elites right there, so that's the only one we can do. Um, um, those I are all good. we want to, for sure, upgrade, because upgrade on uppercut is, like, so valuable right now. That makes it so that we can weaken vulnerable, and it'll carry over to another turn as well. All right, so we want to attack the outer one with the least health and try and burst it down as fast as possible. So Carnage and Strike on the one with 38. Unfortunately, this Orichalcum is like stupidly good here in Act One. It's going to mitigate yeah, so much can... damage for us. Um, so I think you just strike, strike the one in the back for the kill, and then defend. Well, actually, hold on. Defend is blocking. Like we can just Orichalcum instead of defend. Yeah, it's better to it just... actually blocks for more that way. There's no I. Well, you want to kill the one in the back. It doesn't matter which damage card you do it with. Just kill it in the back, and then pass the turn and let Orichalcum. Block yeah, because that's only five block compared to six. Okay. So now, now that we've killed one of them, we can play a little bit more defensive and try and preserve our health, but we really wanted to burst that one down so that we weren't getting attacked for 18 every other turn. Right, and I assume, because I don't have a block card anyway, I would want a Thunderclap and then Uppercut something, because yes, it would apply to the... get the artifact charge off and then Uppercut. Now, hold on. Before we choose which one we're attacking, we want to think a little bit about... We want to kill one on a turn that it's trying to attack for us so that like we're effectively blocking and attacking at the same time. By doing so if 14... I uppercut uh, the one that's about to daze me, I could draw into Carnage and kill it. So Carnage, let's look at our deck if you go to the bottom left. Or I guess look in your discard pile. So we're we're probably drawing a card, a deck with at least... We're, we're probably drawing a hand with at least a few dazes. We definitely kill if we get Carnage in the hand, but that's only about a 1 in 3 chance. There's four defense and a shrug it off and five days it is so two out of three mm. cards we're drawing is not a damage card i think the chances that we're drawing enough damage to kill the one with 30 the, the left one next turn is kind of low i would probably go for the one on the right because we can we're definitely killing that one in two turns. yeah and it's going to mitigate the damage this turn so yeah that too yeah so like well, this this hand wouldn't have killed at 22 so, so I assume um, I would uh, bat. Yeah, just bash strike the one on the left. Oh shoot! Or Calcum is actually better than defend is. No, no, sorry, the one on the right. Okay, well I, I, I'm, I, I I'm yeah, it's whatever. Whatever. It's whatever. We'll kill it. We'll kill it on this turn while it's attacking. Yeah, we're 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 fine. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Um, yeah, carnage barely up. Unfortunately, strike doesn't kill from ten HP, so you do have to. Uh, waste I can carnage. Damage. I can carnage it and then strike the other. Yeah. If uh, if we'd put all the damage on the one on the right last turn, it would have could have struck and then carnage the other one. But it, I think it's fine. We have plenty of mitigation here. Um, shrug it off first to, to see if the draw. Yeah. Bummer. And then yeah, oh, just but, I mean, strike. Yeah. It's pretty good to draw an ethereal right now though. Yeah, get it out of the deck. Oh, our cat's being a little bitch. I'm gonna go get it off the desk. I'm gonna be doing a lot of that during this run. I'm just letting you guys know. Run ruined. Ruined, I say. Just reset. <laughs> Just reset. Did you see the video I posted in uh, the video game server today, John? Alrighty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which remind me about was? Wind Waker? Yeah. Oh, the I, I uh, actually, the mini game. Um, I saw that come up in my YouTube feed before you'd even linked it, and um, didn't get around to watching it. But when you posted, it, I was like, "Oh, this is probably good," so I, I gave it a watch. That was a really, really good cool. use of the thirty minutes it took to watch that this morning. Dude, I well, love I Wind nothing. Waker speedruns. It's so good. It's a really, really good speed game. 
Pocket Watch is pretty strong. Okay, so looking what at does our that even do? here, Bludgeon is like stupidly good front loading damage. It's kind of like Carnage on crack. The it sure is, looks like it. Yeah, like the thing is, we're already kind of good at that, and our deck is getting pretty high on its energy cost. So I don't know. We actually want another card like that. Like we have Carnage to to do that job. Um, Rupture doesn't do anything in our deck right now, and it's not that good even when it does. Like, it's just a little bit too cutesy of a combo kind of card. It can it can do things in very specific decks, but generally speaking, like there's no point in taking a speculative Rupture. You're not going to get that kind of deck often enough. Um, so second wind, exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Um, I don't know, that's, that's iffy. Like, let's look at our deck. We don't actually have that many non-attack cards right now. We yeah, we just have the four board blocks, defense. And we have the shrug it off. And the shrug it off, yeah. So, like, in any random hand, we probably have, like, two non-attack cards plus that one. So, like, there's a lot of hands where we just don't have any skills in the hand when we draw that, and it's it's a completely dead card. I think it's pretty pretty fine to just skip here, honestly. None of these cards do a lot for us. Okay. If we're taking anything, it's bludgeon, but I don't think we need it. Oh my god. Okay, let me just throw her out of the room. Now, when you say throw, do you mean like a Twitch streamer would throw your cat? Like, uh... He means, he means throw, as in, like, when there's a minute left in Rocket League and you're up by three, and then you lose the game anyway. Okay. Uh, so I assume that we're going to be upgrading yeah, uh, sure. Bash this time, right? Um, so Bash is a solid. Uh, we do have Uppercut to get us vulnerable as well as Thunderclap, so I think that that kind of de-emphasizes how important Bash is. Um, we can upgrade Carnage, that and that gets us 8 damage, which is pretty Jesus. good. Uh, we can also upgrade Shrug It Off, which gets it up to 12 block, or sorry, 11 block. Still pretty good, which, though. Um, considering like how little our deck blocks, that's actually pretty good. Like, that makes it a lot more viable so there's than There's a lot that. of turns where we don't want to play block cards. and like, So if you play to Shrug It Off, that's only blocking for 2 more than just not blocking at all would have been. So getting that up to 11 makes playing Shrug It Off like a lot more palatable. Okay, I think so, I'll do that then. I think Carnage and Shrug It Off are both like pretty reasonable upgrades here. I think sure. I think upgrading Shrug It Off is important to make it more distinguishable than just letting the Aura Child come block. Yeah. All right. So uh, Lagavulin this, this here. Bitch. The pattern here. He'll he'll stay asleep for three turns or until you've done any damage to his health, and then after that he does attack, attack, debuff, attack, attack, debuff, and he'll just repeat that pattern. And the debuff is a permanent decrease to your strength and your dexterity. So we okay. really want to um, not let the fight go on for too long. Um, I think we, we don't want to let that Carnage exhaust. Because it's ethereal, if we don't play it, it exhausts itself. So, right. Um, considering we're not like waiting for any powers or anything, I think we just Carnage Strike here. I'll it's important we don't get any vulnerable on him first, but whatever. got my uppercut though. Which um, I think you uppercut, shrug it off, maybe. Um, you have the thunderclap too. Yeah, so if we so we could thunderclap for four, and then uppercut would go to another. That would go to nineteen. Like, does it round up or down? It rounds down, so we would be doing twenty-three damage that way, and then he would be going to. Uh, 14 damage, and we'd be blocking for six of that because of Orichalcum. Right. I think, okay. Like, because we have Orichalcum, I think we just uh, we can just, just play like, way more aggressive out there. I would thunderclap uppercut because the the weak on that mitigates for us as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all those little tiny interactions that I'm not like. Um, oh. You just keep doing that. <laughs> So I would Same actually, play. I would strike instead of thunderclap because we're gonna get more weak out of the uppercut, and he's already weak as it is. So you get a little bit more damage that way. Well, so this micro, next turn is micro gonna be off the debuff. Evasion. We don't have right. to worry about taking any damage. Okay, so here, uh, definitely just like strike carnage. I might kill. No, no way, uh, we're getting real close. And then we'll. Okay, well, I mean, he's turn. he's dead next turn. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is significantly like good at killing these Act One elites. We have lots of good front. Um, can you play a power card? Okay, well, if I get some powers, I'll be dope. Yeah, we'll definitely be looking to add some powers for sure. One card, no war cry is bad. We're kind of whiffing on elite cards here. None of these are very good. Um, burning I'm pact fine with... is okay. Like if we're taking anything, we're taking that. I would be a lot more like... happy taking it if we had some kind of exhaust synergies like feel no pain. As it is, it's like okay, we're exhausting one card and drawing two, but we also had to draw burning pact and pay for it. So like we're up one card, but. We're also, we only have like, two energy at that point too to do it so it's kind of like you're spending an energy to not really do anything and we have the pocket watch which is often drawing us three cards in a turn anyway so like our card draw is pretty good um war cry we already talked about havoc like if we had a demon form in the deck like so the havoc is good if you can manipulate a three cost card on the top of your deck and so like something like headbutt lets you take something out of your discard pile and put it on top of your deck so like if you can headbutt and then havoc uh the the demon form that's kind of cute but that requires specifically having like the demon form in your discard pile and then you need to have the havoc available to play right after you headbutt it so like a lot of stuff has to come together it's so like if you had a, a runic pyramid where you can retain all your cards, that's okay. But it's just like it doesn't come together that much. I think so maybe we'll skip. Here, honestly, yeah. I would uh, love a drop kick right now. I would love uh... one of my favorite pummel and drop kick are okay, probably. Kunai is fucking Ooh. amazing. That is a great relic. So we're gonna be looking to lean into some cheaper attacks to try and trigger that more often because that turns our offense into mitigation. I'm assuming shrug it off and then probably strike strike unless I get something better for, for two, right? Draw here. But yeah. yeah. Like we can't turn all of our Ooh, into that was offense. That. Yeah, that's that's what we're there gonna you go. draw. Perfect. That's what's up right there. Yeah. And then give me uppercut. Yep. So like thunderclap uppercut maybe? Because I also have the Oral Halcom trigger, so I'll block it all. Yeah, you'll take one, but we're about to heal up for six at the end of the fight. So yeah, Thunderclap Uppercut. I shouldn't take any because the weak from the Uppercut, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I'm, I'm learning. It happens. <laughs> it happens. It happens, it happens guys. I, I've been told it happens. I'm a genius. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we're like, we're still almost full because of Burning Blood. All right, so... Um, Flame Barrier is like a good excuse for me to talk about two cost cards. Um, if there's a thing that your deck is bad at, two cost cards become extremely valuable because um, there's you draw five cards a turn, but you don't get to keep those cards. So generally speaking, you can kind of divide the things your deck needs to do into a couple of jobs. It needs to front load damage, it needs to mitigate damage, and it needs to scale you up in some way for later game things and boss fights. And you want like any random five cards you draw out of your deck to probably do, at the very least, you really want it to be able to mitigate any random turn. And you probably want it to be able to front load damage every turn, and you would like it to be able to scale you in some way, like most turns. But that's a lot of things to ask five cards to do. So something like Flame Barrier that gets you two energy, you're investing two energy into it, but you're getting two cards worth of output out of it essentially, like two one cost cards output is really really good because only like if you draw just that, it's kind of like you draw you drew two defensive cards in one uh, in one use. Like it lets it lets you sink your energy very efficiently into blocking on the turns that you care about doing that. So like okay, so is fucking great. Um, right, so I'll I'll pick that up. And the other armaments is also good, but like we're not taking it over flame barrier. Okay, so armaments might have been something I would have wanted to take if flame barrier wasn't there. Yeah, and I'm looking pretty good at 74, and I've also yeah, got. No, no, you should go and heal at the There's fire. You should go heal. Yeah. So I'm thinking um, like elite. Okay, so it's it, the the middle path is fight elite fight fight. The one on the right is elite fight question mark fight. Um, so generally later in the act, question marks are more valuable because we're pulling from this hard pool of enemy fights and like random uh, random hallway fights are probably not going to give us like they're just like statistically not super likely to give us the cards we're looking for now. Like things we're starting to look for now are good mitigation cards and ways to scale up. 
Uh, we'd also really like to get some AoE because Act 2 cares a lot about your AoE and we don't have any of that. So okay. things like elites and question marks are higher priority right now. So I would take that right hand path. There's all our right, friend. So this is the gremlin knob. Um, just throw all your strikes down, yeah. Yeah, just front and that low gets damage. Us an extra dexterity. So like, if we do decide to block it, or it's a it's a better kind. Uh, thunderclap uppercut here. We're gonna take some damage here. We're gonna get socked on the jaw, but it's okay. Wait, we're already. Ooh. So strike strike carnage because I already have weak on it, right? Yeah, won't quite kill it. Or um, I meant uh, vulnerable. Vulnerable. Yeah, just just race the damage. This Orichalcum is like doing yeah, this, this, this guy, dude, doing going the, work to say that. It's going the fucking distance, dude. Oh my god, we got Shuriken 2. Oh, okay. So we I'll... really want to get something like Anger that's a zero cost attack because um, we get a strength and a dexterity anytime we play three attacks in a turn. So uh, you mentioned that we needed AoE and Cleave. Yeah, Cleave is not great AoE, but it is AoE and like we have none. So I think we pretty much have to take it. And it scales up the strength. Right. In AoE fights. Um, um, so these guys, the way that they work is the first time you hit them, if it's not lethal, they like curl up and they get that much block. So you you like you like what you're trying to do is tag them to, to get that off and then kill them afterwards. So, but I think probably just flame barrier and then strike one of them it doesn't really matter. When you want to strike the front one then, because the other two are going to get hit off the flame barrier. It won't trigger their passive if they're taking the hit from Flame Barrier. Is the thing. Oh, it okay. has to be from you attacking them. But I would probably still strike the front one because it's gonna like the other ones will be at lower health and more easily one shotable. Because if you can kill them in one hit, they don't get a chance to block. Uh, we want to use the Carnage, so just one shot like any of them, and then I would throw the Cleave down. And they're not attacking this turn. But they're weakening me, that's fine. It's fine, you just kill them now. They died at two strikes, yeah. Okay. That's not bad. What is... Oh dear. We'll probably be using that in the boss fight, just to throw it out there. Well, um... You don't need the draw three cards potion, really. Yeah, we're already drawing a lot of cards. I think you can discard that and take Distilled Chaos. Um... So... I'm not saying I'm going to take it, but I am going to say this right here is probably one of my favorite cards ever, just because of the concept behind it. It's a very good card if you can get any strength scaling. Yeah, but uh, Infernal Blade, I mean, since it's an exhaust card, it seems decent, right? Um, I'm not super excited about any of these, to be honest. Like, these are all cards that are <laughs> front-loaded damage, and like our deck is really good at that already. Okay, so really maybe okay just skip just it. skip here, honestly. Okay, that sounds good. Let's see what we get here. Um, I mean, gold to just look at three potions, honestly, is like a pretty fucking good deal. I would just do that. Um, so explosive potion is really good in Act Two because there's a lot of, of fights that have multiple weak enemies. I You're probably getting rid of plated armor for that, right? Yeah, uh, you could also get rid of the. Like, the regen potions, we're already pretty full health. I think you can get rid of that pretty safely. The flex potion is going to be pretty good in this fight. I don't know that it's necessarily better than either of these others. I think you could probably lose the Essence of Steel and take the flex potion. And weak, I'm, I'm, I'm good on. We're, we're pretty good on weak as it is. I would have picked the right one. Sorry. Um, I think Sorry. you want to Carnage Strike the front guy, or Carnage Defend. Yeah, maybe Carnage Defend. Well, you're gonna... Oh, duh. Oh, yeah. I would have had the Aura Helcom. That's, that's fine. I'm dumb. That's fine. We, we, we out here learning. Depends I don't do it sometimes, also. If you're not playing more than one. Probably one so shot I would that actually guy. uppercut the guy in the back. We want to start getting him down because he buffs his strength. He, he scales. Turn, and then just like strike the front guy since he's not damaging us. And then we'll just try and kill the front guy with another strike. And then uh, get the bird cultist going. Or you can just and, leave to kill the front guy. 
And he's not gonna damage me, yeah. so. Yeah, and then uppercut the, the bird. And then we just kill him with whatever. Whatever. Full health. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah. Anger, so, anger or like, demon farm, I would have right? taken anger over almost anything because we have Kurik, Shuriken, and Kunai, but demon form is like... Insane. Put this in your deck and your boss fights are taken care of. That's your scaling in one card. So just just get it. Yeah, you, know, you take demon form. It's okay. it's a game-winning card on its own if you can support it. Um, so... Demon form's pretty good. So there's two options we have here in my mind. There's demon form and there's cleave. Demon form is really good, and it's going to be really good in the Hexaghost fight, but I think we beat Hexaghost already. I am concerned about our Act 2 because we our entire AoE is cleave, so maybe upgrading it to make it a little bit better helps us uh, I'm, get over I think the I'm gonna do that. Act 2. It, until we find something like a whirlwind, you know, I think I think the cleave upgrade might be a little bit better. That's we're reasonable, but disappointing. Form. We're going to be upgrading the demon form for sure. Uh, I if would you just ask, thunderclap me. uppercut. Got him. Oh, it's right, this so guy. This first attack is where all the damage comes from. Uh, his subsequent turns were not are not going to hit for that hard until he lights up all of his fires again. Demon form is going to make it so that we do enough damage to kill him before the six come up. So I would just play it eight and thirty. Like you're going to full deal after this fight is over. Didn't I demon form and then you have a free defend because you played a power? But that's not better than the yeah, original. Box for less though. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, but I could also. Um... I could also play, play three cards. And, uh, distilled chaos. Well, the thing is, like those cards when they come out do less right now because you haven't ticked up with demon form yet. So, like, okay. if you're gonna play that, I would wait until your strength has gone up. Okay. Like, there's no point in playing that until it's gonna kill him. You know, it doesn't turn speed up your clock at all. Hey, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah him a bunch. Yep. You get it. Hit him a bunch again. Yeah, you definitely want to uppercut for the mitigation and everything. Yeah, like you're playing this all correctly. And then Orichalcum just full blocks for you because it's which is because it's like it's the just highest fucking... value purchase we've made in this entire <laughs> run it's, ever. It's really fucking it, good. It's probably blocked for like over 50 damage for us at this point. It, it's definitely it's definitely up there for sure. Anyway, now you have eight strength. <laughs> Your cards. Yeah, no, like we start hitting for a lot with demon form. Uh, I would thunder. Yeah, thunderclap first, and then uppercut for the damage. Jeez. Dude, like we're literally shitting on this guy. What is this? Anyway, now you have ten strength. Uh, so cleave strike is not quite enough to kill. Cleave strike. Uh, we'll shrug it off and then go from there. Sure, why not? Oh. Or, or I didn't do my math right on the oh, or <laughs> Okay, so Reaper is hella nice with demon form. Oh That's, that like that card, even though it does damage, like actually becomes a mitigation card with demon form in play. Because we can just use our health as our blocking. Like we can just take a bunch of hits to the face while demon form ticks up. And, and then, then they do like a massive reaper to get it all like back. Heal yourself back up, and it's it's very strong. Okay, I'll so grab Fiend that. Fiendfire is great damage, but we're kind of like relying on Demon Form plus Carnage to be our damage. Double tap sucks. It's a bad card. Like, why would you spend? Why would you wait to draw a card that makes an attack go off twice when you could just add another attack to your deck and not have to worry about drawing them at the same time? You know. Okay, so Mark of Pain, like we, so just like right off the bat, we really want extra energy in this deck because we have Shuriken and Kunai. Anything that can get us to the point where we're playing three attacks in a turn is incredibly valuable. And we have Demon Form that costs three. So like, if we're on three energy, Demon Form is our entire turn. With this, like we can play Demon Form, shrug it off, and like mitigate for a lot more. 
so we really, really want extra energy on this deck. Um, Velvet Shaker you... is, like, in this current deck, it's okay, because we're not... Like, we're playing a lot of high-cost cards, so it's probably fine. Um, I feel like it has, the, it has more potential to become bad with how the, with how the deck might evolve. Mark of Pain, I think, is, like, a pretty safe pick to take. We, we can, like, pretty quantifiably know how bad it is in, in any... Like, for the rest of the run. I think, like, if our deck... It's not gonna get to go better or worse, going right now, depending on the Joker other cards better, I pick up. But it could evolve in a direction where we would wish we had Mark of Pain. I don't okay, know. Okay, I'll, I'll pick up Mark of Pain, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's look at our deck real quick. Let's make... Uh, like, we have, so we have Bash, we have Carnage, we have Uppercut, we have Flame Barrier, we have Reaper, we have Demon Form. There's, like, I, I really think we should actually take the Velvet Choker. It's, like, it's going to take a lot to get this deck to the point where it's playing more than six cards a turn. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I would lean Choker. Let's do that. Let us proceed to the right, next so the act. boss fight is the Collector. We really want to try and find some more AoE because that fight value Oh, he has the minions, bad. doesn't he? We do have 226 yep. gold, so hitting a shop would be kind of nice. Unfortunately, if we hit that shop, we're funneled into a second shop, and it probably becomes a dead floor because 226 buys, like, one relic, but we'll be wiped out. Let's look at all the elites and see how our paths are shaping up. Um, so there's, a, there's two we can get on the left-hand side there. Just keep scrolling up. So, like, pretty much any of them can get one more as well. So maybe it's something like so fight, if question start, mark, yeah, fight, question mark, fight. I, I kind of like that path. That gets us, let's look at the campfires we get along that. We get one in between and then a second I can get, one. I can hit a second one if I need it. And then that would hit there me is, a shop right here. It does right give here. us a chance to get a shop. Yeah, I think that's the play. Gets us three elites with a chance to bail before the third one if we need to. Okay. Plated armor. Oh, that's where like every time I I do damage through the armor, it reduces that by one, right? Right. So you can uppercut strike strike to get uh, charges on kunai and shuriken both, which is heckin' nice. Too bad uh, uh, dexterity doesn't affect uh, yeah, <laughs> fucking or help. Um, I think I would just demon form shrug it off here. That'd be disgusting though. Ooh. Free cleave is nice. I'll take a free cleave. Gimme. Bye, Carnage. It's okay. I'll live. Probably. Let's see. Um, Thunderclap, uppercut to strike. Yeah, or I could go. You could, um, you could also flame barrier to not take any damage. But well, if, if I you uppercut him, we'll. Attacks, that does also tick up your. Um, like you'll go, you'll take four, so you'll go to seventy-four, which is still in the range where you heal up at the end. Yeah, let's do let's do three attacks. Better to get the extra dexterity and make our blocks and stuff better. Yeah. Okay. I'm only taking one damage from. Oh yeah, because of the weak. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. So that only works for unblocked damage. So you. I can cleave to into block it out first. I can. You're gonna heal anyway. Right. So yeah, like we're getting to full health either way. Do whatever you want. Matter. Oh yeah, I guess that would have like ooh energy potion. That's pretty nice. I think I'd rather have that than the distilled distilled chaos. Distilled chaos is the type of potion that I would play if I was not being watched by anybody and I was like not really worried about the run ending at any fucking moment. Yeah, I mean it's a good potion. It's just like, just because like it's gonna do. Oh. Oh, Another... feel no pain. Feel no pain. Feel no pain. Feel no pain. Oh, Take that's the... That. Uh... Okay, feel no pain. But I don't have any exhaust cards yet, but it now I can matter. start picking... We're going to get exhaust cards. Like, a third but now of, I can start picking them up without, cards like... Exhaust. Like, you're going to get exhaust cards, and that becomes a, a stupidly ah. good mitigation engine. Even if you have no exhaust cards in your entire deck, a lot of enemies put dazes in your deck, and those exhaust and make block for you when you play feel no pain. By uppercut because it has these four stacks. Should it... no, that'll get rid of the two of them. It'll get but rid of it the won't two apply... um, artifact charges. But it won't reply. Okay, yeah. Right. Still, but still worth we're, using. We're playing though. strike just to get the 
shuriken and kunai triggers yep. to go. Okay, I feel good about that. Um, Demon form, shrug it off? Yeah. Shrug it off first, though. Okay. I mean, there's nothing we're drawing that we care about more than demon form. You yeah, you're, yeah, you're to right. See what the uh, demon form made free, by the way. We had a free card there. We could have. Oh, yeah. That's. I'm not used to like worry. I'm not used to worrying about like looking at that yet. We do have 20 damage coming in. Flame barrier only blocks for nine, so you could, um, if you flame barrier defend, you take seven. Flame barrier defend, and then I could like cleave. We could also just do damage uh what's in our draw pile because we we do have a reaper in our deck which can heal a lot of this so we're still waiting on it yeah i mean you can just reaper to heal the damage i would probably just uh bash probably bash, bash carnage well let's see so bash does 11 how much health does he have right now it's 42 block plus that so that would be 62 23 plus 11 so 34 43 yeah, so go ahead and yeah, just bash Carnage. And then next turn, if we get the Reaper, we'll deal for a lot. Didn't draw the Reaper, unfortunately. We can get it next turn, though. Um, just just so throw what? all your Stall? blocks down or whatever. Because we want to heal off the Reaper before we end the fight. Okay, so uh, uppercut to get his block off, and then it'll put weak on to make the reaper hit for more. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Excellent. Okay, proper sequence thing. Oh, flex. I love flex. Flex is a fucking awful card. What would you dare say? I, I don't care, dude. I love. <laughs> yeah, dude, one of my favorite decks of all time was just all it was was flexes and pummels. Okay, so this so guy. I would like I would like, like flex the best thing possible. that the best that flex can be is like flex <laughs> plus four attacks that you're all playing. So that puts eight extra damage onto those four attacks, like generally speaking. Like, there's a lot of cards in this game that you can just play that do eight damage. So like, why would like flex? All it did was listen, listen man. All right, I, all right. I'm just saying I like it. I'm not saying I'm gonna take it. Damn. <laughs> uh, so because we have a demon form, sword boomerang is actually like a pretty premium source of damage. It'll, it'll, like each time any strength goes up, it get to scale off however much strength we have. Okay, that seems. <laughs> But so thunderclap, um, strike, carnage. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, so if we kill the guy in the back, we get vulnerable, so we do take more damage. But it also does stop him from hitting us. And yeah. we do have Reaper, which we're gonna be healing off of when we end the fight. So I probably want to um, strike. Oh, I well, guess it it's doesn't. not gonna make a difference because it's just going to reduce yeah. um, the. I like, think it's only gonna tick on the block. It's not gonna. Yeah. Do anything, like, okay, that actually. that makes sense. Um, let's see. You could just uh, strike, strike, sword, boomerang, shrug it off. Do the do the attacks first to get the extra dexterity, and then shrug it off. So that way we're still scaling and uh, getting a lot of his plated armor down. And then we also we just take two. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Okay. Got my reaper. We want to probably save that until our demon form is ticked up a little bit more, which we haven't played yet, unfortunately. We probably don't want to actually do any more damage to his health until we're reapering to kill him. Um, demon form... Well, I can just kill him now, and I'm still going to... Oh, no, no, I'm at 64, 70... not 74. Well... We are getting to the point where we can only heal. We, we can only heal 18 off him at max. Um, let's see, so we don't have any way to block 13 this turn. Yeah, I would just kill him. Going to 70 is fine. We'll we'll reaper next turn. Oh, I thought we were killing him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that, oh, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was no, that was a better line. That was a better yeah, yeah, line. yeah, yeah. All, all intentional, all intentional. Um, I actually kind of like taking. Well, I, th I like Anger and Cleave both. Cleave is not exactly what we're after, but we do need more AoE. Anger is nice because it makes it a lot easier to trigger the three attacks in one turn. And, okay. like, 
as demon form ticks up, you don't care that much about what the card says, like, as far as its damage number. You just care that it says deal damage, because, like, <laughs> if you're taking, if you got 20 damage from demon form, like, whether the card says 6 or 8 doesn't really matter yeah, that it's... much. So, uh, I mean, Cleave's probably the wiser choice. Because and I'm fighting melee. the Collector at the end, too. What's that? I'm fighting the Collector, yeah, so. I, I think the Cleave's fine. Um, I think you want to take the left path for the extra Yeah, because we're going to hit that. Ooh, oh. ooh. Um, this I mean, is a is really, really interesting event. So five apparitions. So intangible makes it so that all damage sources go to one. We do go down to 40 max HP, though. But that also, those all exhaust, which does turn on our feel no pain pretty nicely. Hmm, um... I don't know, man. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to look at this from the perspective of um, a, a person that is not super like good at the game. If that makes if that makes sense. I think, that just seems risky. I think this is the kind of deck that likes these apparitions, honestly. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's like. There's let's, definitely we have, a world we where we just too. die from taking this, but there's also a lot of worlds where this blocks. Like one of these apparitions is blocking for like 50 damage in one turn. So, I don't know. I would I would be taking it, especially at higher ascension. But let's um, let's just see let's see how this goes. Like what, what happens if we lose like a run? An argument for not taking it. I would uh, just demon form apparition. Oh okay. Well. Oh, and we got a free free hit uh -huh. out of it. Fantastic. Um, just hit the. We want to kill the bird first because it scales up its its damage. Oh yeah, and okay. And if you hit was it if you hit it three times, it basically like. Yeah. Um, let's see. So you want to throw both your apparitions down before, like they they exhaust out of your hand. Yeah, because so, they're ethereal. Yeah. So and then I would uppercut the bird. I think. Oh, they stack though. Okay, yes. I did not realize. So we that. get to be a, ethereal next turn as well. And that's gonna go real well if that were Halcom, because I had to get hit yeah, like over six sure. times. Um. So, let's see, with the flying debuff... Um, Thunderclap Carnage will for sure kill it. Thunderclap Cleave. Yeah, I kind of like Thunderclap Cleave and then both Apparitions. Yeah, Apparition seems way better now that I know they can stack, because I yeah, did not know sure. that part. Unfortunately, like, that Feel seems... No Pain came after all the Apparitions, but we do still get blocks off the Dazes, so I would still play it. I mean, you can play your whole hand this turn. Unfortunately, all of those Dazes block for us now, even if we didn't get the kill. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty good. Take another feel, no pain, for sure. Oh, for, ooh, we can, we can uh, like lean really heavily into the exhaust stuff now. Twenty damage. Uh, Tom said that his. I don't think Discord. that's better than any of the potions we have right now, necessarily. Uh, Tom said that his Discord uh, crash and isn't loading back in. Oh, rip. Oh, uh, wait, wait. What about the fire potion? I uh, I don't think it's like significantly better than anything you have right now. Um, okay. While Tom gets his thing figured out, I'm gonna run to the restroom real quick. Okay, I'm gonna get some second. water and feed uh and feed my cat. Yeah, can you hear me? This thing on? Oh, you mask. Tell me with a sethic.
Hello? What's up? Okay, you're on. Desktop loading back. You are kind of cutting in and out just a little bit, dude. Ugh. And we're just waiting for um, John to get back from the bathroom. Oh, he's in the bathroom. Hear me? Yeah, he's in the bathroom. All righty. Um, let's see what bullshit elite we've got in Act 2 to face here. Alright, so we ready to start the elite fight? Yep. Is Tom Let's... back? Uh, kind of? Kind of. Alright. Okay, um... So, this is the Gremlin Leader. The Gremlin Leader, the big one, um... does, like, an absolutely unfair amount of damage if it attacks, and it can buff its strength up by a lot. Now... If there is one or zero little gremlins, it is a lot more likely, it's very likely to spend its turn summoning new gremlins. So that's why like AoE is very valuable in this fight, because it makes it so that the gremlin leader is likely to waste a turn summoning new gremlins. So we want to we wanna be getting it so that we're killing at least one, preferably all the gremlins. So like you could bash the fat gremlin apparition and cleave and I, hold on hold on wait 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 uh, no no yep. shit i was gonna say use the strength potion to kill the other one ah Too late. sorry no, no that, that was me just being a little little eager beaver over here i'm eager. a genius sure. oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so now we're getting hit for 27 yeah look at that That's we kind do of, have kind the of apparition taking... though fortunately well i can i can uh, apparition, apparition and then apparition demon form and actually i would even spend the energy potion to get both feel no pains in play as well and that made some cards free play that shit um i would uppercut the big one for the debuffs strike the little one we don't kill it unfortunately but we've got uh, we got all the good shit here Okay, so we can, um, I mean, we might apparition. as well play the Apparition, it's going to exhaust, any well, eh, I mean, I guess we could have just played our energy on attacks. Uh, I would do everything but the Reaper, and that'll get us the, uh, the Relic procs as well. Nice. This deck is strong. Yeah, this is, this feels, this feels good. Play both Apparitions and Carnage. Tom's here too. And then, like, you can see, like, well, like, we're just passively generating, like, all, we don't even have that much of an exhaust engine, and we're just passively generating a shitload of block here. Uh, definitely bash, uh, just cleave, cleave strike, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Or Bash Cleave. Bronze Scales is a very good relic in this act. We're facing a few more elites. One of them is likely to be Book of Stabbing, which attacks Oh, I times hate on that one. And... That's the one that gives you wounds, right? Yeah. Um, I think we can take power through here. We have... Um, we're getting a big enough deck where the two wounds are not a, that big of a deal. And that's going to help us a lot on turns where like we didn't happen to draw one of our apparitions. Um, <laughs> what are we doing upgrading? Okay. Uh, I think... Demon form is probably the upgrade here, because um, like I mean, that because a lot of our mitigation is more. currently based on our five apparitions. We we really want to be killing stuff ideally like before, or like as soon as possible after those run out, so we don't have to rely on our other mitigation cards where we can. Um, okay, so the one we want to kill is the one in the back because he gives us the worst debuffs. Is that the one where you can't? It's like what is it? You like, can't attack or something? Yeah. So you could. Um, Let's see. Apparition, apparition, carnage. Strike is hitting, so 26. Uh, you can hit for... 36. Yeah, I think that's the right play. Because even with the strength potion, we wouldn't quite kill the one in the back. We'd have to spend also the 10 AoE potion. Which I don't know that we want to be spending two potions on this unless we really need to. Um... Let's see, play the yeah, play the other apparition, and then we can't get a kunai proc, unfortunately. I'd probably just bash strike the one in the back. It's still going to be taking thorn damage too. Yeah. So it's dead next turn. Um. Let's see. Play the demon form. See if it gives us what it gives us for as far as free cards. Free cleave is nice. Uh, apparition cleave. And I've still got yeah, the stacks of tangible. Feel no pain first, and then apparition. We get block off of it. You get a free thunderclap. So now you can thunderclap cleave sword boomerang, and that'll proc your relics. Well, I think that sucks about that feel no pain is I don't get the or help him on that I mean, that we're only turn. taking one because of yeah. apparition. Uh, you can just kill here. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's nice. Um, so Exhume is pretty good with Reaper because we can get it back out and Reaper a second time in fights. And it exhausts, so we get feel no pain triggers off of it. Uh, okay, I will. I'll do that. We'll get, give me. I mean, getting anything that can increase take our max them, right? HP is pretty nice right now because we're so low on it. So we can definitely be taking some curses and doing that. Um, so we're our taking this is... right hand path and going through that then... store. Uh, okay. I think you want to hit the question mark rather than the two fights. Okay. Um. I wouldn't upgrade the Reaper, the one extra damage. Like, we're, we're Reapering when we have Demon Pain, or Demon Form going off. I would probably upgrade one of the Feel No Pains. Because that's going to make that passive block quite a bit better. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's where I would go. Okay. This guy's kind of bullshit. Um, uh, oh, it's this one. Okay. I think you probably want to throw your weak potion here. For sure. Oh yeah, this thing does a ton of damage. Um, I think you just strike cleave cleave to get our defense up a little bit, and then we just accept the damage. Unfortunately. Yeah. We're gonna try and heal with Reaper to get that back. Um, let's see. I think both apparitions and uppercut to keep the. So feel no pain in going. here. There no. Apparition, apparition, uppercut. Okay, that's yeah, that feels good. Okay. Now we're wanting to try and heal some with the uh, Reaper, ideally. So let's see. You could apparition, apparition Reaper, sword boomerang, maybe. He's close to dead anyway. That went well. The full heal. That, and by well, I mean perfect. 
Um, I like another Battle flame barrier. Now. Like we're now at the point where we do care a lot about drawing cards because we can draw oh. to our feel no pains. We can draw to our demon form and stuff and battle. We, we want it. We actually have to, we actually have cards that we want and need to yeah. be able to dig to. Uh, I would hit the question mark. Another hundred gold. Uh, actually, if um, I do, I would take the curse because we're taking it out in the shop immediately. So that's more gold, and we get six max HP off of the dark periap. Like that. So remove the curse first. Uh, no, let's look at what options we've got here. Um, I don't love any of the cards, honestly. Sling of Courage, I think, is pretty good. Um, the that I forget what the name of it is. That that relic on the left. Um, that's that's not bad because of Reaper. Right. Okay. Um, I have a seven hundred two gold, so I can get. Like yeah. magic flower, sling, and it can and remove a card. A card. Remove. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I don't know that I would buy any of the cards, honestly. Uh, nothing looks. You I mean, if buy I get the third relic there, just like two random upgrades is not bad. Battle trance, Battle trance. is like a good upgrade. <laughs> like, sure. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, and not take the curse out. I think that was a pretty good shot. Um, yeah, that one will. Potions that are for sale. We might. We have. We might be able to buy one. Uh, 52 colorless potion sucks. Speed potion definitely could save us on a bad turn. I'd, I'd buy it just as an insurance policy. Okay. And yeah, the elite for sure. This guy. Again. Okay, so it's this one again. Um, there's a lot of damage coming in here. We don't have any blocks. Let's see. Uh, I can could, uppercut. Um, we could do I uppercut strike strike and it would kill this it would mitigate from here and it would kill this one. Yeah, we do miss out on the demon form, but we do protect ourselves from a lot of damage as well. But I could also demon form strike and then when I get a reaper it's gonna hit three enemies. Well, we do want to take these guys out ASAP. I think if you do that mm -hmm. plan, you throw the AoE potion and take one of the gremlins out that way. So do demon form strike AoE potion? Yeah, so we take 18, which puts us at 28. Mm. I think we're trying to... We're definitely trying to Reaper at the end of the fight. I think we need the demon form to make this fight end. So I, okay. I like demon form strike AoE potion. Ooh. Oh, nice. Well, that, that worked out well. So strike uh, and now yeah, strike. Save the potion and strike the fat gremlin again. Okay. And of course, that were Halcom, so I'm not taking the full amount. Okay. We drew a lot of blocks here. Um, feel no see. pain. So play the feel no pain. You'll get a free card out of it anyway. Um, it made a strike free, so you can throw that on the the gremlin. The like little, which one? The gremlin wizard. We want to take him out. His next, right, next turn okay. is going to hit us really hard. Uh, let's maybe shrug, let's uh, shrug it off and see a card. Ooh. We don't. I mean, that doesn't do anything for us this turn. Um. Play. Let's see how many cards we have in hand. We have eight. I would play the sword boomerang. And then, then maybe battle trance. Yeah, battle trance and see what we draw. Um, that's a kind of a waste of these apparitions, unfortunately. But I think you just have to—I mean, you just have to play the field no pain. Hopefully, it hits something useful. Hit it. Put it hit. Oh, yeah. Too late. Because uh, field no pain is a power, so it made it. I free. yeah, I, I am not used to like even looking at that. So what? Uh, I guess just thunderclap cleave. Something Apparition, just so there. it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, how much is Cleave hitting for right now? A lot. 19. Not quite a kill, unfortunately. Oh, wait, if I did... Oh, I don't have a way to trigger that. You could uppercut the big one, and then Cleave, and then Strike. I think that's the, the way to go here. Hold on, um, let me think here. Strike the... Strike the big one and then just throw the AoE potion, because we're getting another potion out of this fight, quite likely, anyway. 
Okay, and we almost... Um, look, let's look at our deck. Is there a skill we want in every opening hand? Um, we definitely don't want to use defense. Shrug it off or flame barrier wouldn't be too bad. Getting an apparition in every opening hand is somewhat tempting. It's not great against the collector. Uh, Battle trance in every opening hand, though, is actually really good. Let's do that. Always guaranteed an extra four cards. Um, I guess, like, there's an argument to be made for second wind, I guess, but, like, all of the cards that we are exhausting with that are, like, either block card. Like, it's it's good when it exhausts defends, but when it blocks, when it exhausts, like, apparitions and stuff, it's not very good. I think you can skip here. Three, three, three. Wild Strike on Act 1 early on probably would have been pretty good. Yeah, Wild Strike is a fucking incredible card in the first 10 floors or so. So, definitely don't need a heal, so Smith... Uh, can hit the hit the other feel no pain probably or the cleave because we're about to go into a fight that cares a lot about AOE. I think I'm gonna do the cleave. Yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, especially because it just yeah it does matter a lot. All right, what do we got? The apparitions oh, kind of a waste. I actually wouldn't battle trance here because we don't want to draw all our apparitions right now necessarily. Oh right. Although um, like, so if we draw multiple right now, we can stack them up and not and have them actually apply in the next couple of turns. That's not horrible. Yeah, I was thinking Bash Strike Apparition, just so we don't lose the Apparition, and then that leaves us well, with some vulnerable it, for next it, turn. Because it, like the the stack that we get from it, goes away at the end of the turn anyway. So we're we're wasting. No, I, I mean, I mean, I so do the like card itself. to get a third attack to trigger our kunai and our shuriken, though. Just let's roll the dice on this. Um. It's unfortunate we didn't get a one cost attack. It would have to be bash strike strike. Yeah, but we unfortunately waste two apparitions that way. Maybe feel no pain maybe apparition and just do feel no pain apparition apparition. See what feel no pain makes free. Unfortunately, bash bash, which is nice. Oh, I'll take it. And then strike. Oh, and then yeah. just strike him. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. That could have been. Well, that could have been really bad. Yeah. Hey, look all that damage in. Um, oh, another feel no get pain. Get the other feel no pain down. Yeah, we just get to play everything this turn. I'm cool with that. I you don't need to play the power through though. There's the demon, demon form. form apparition. See what the demon form makes free before you play anything else. There's the cool, which is nice. Yeah, play the apparition. We don't care about Reapering yet. We'll, we'll use that at some point. Even though it's only going to be hitting probably one guy, like our Demon Farm will take that to the point where it's pretty relevant. Yeah. yeah play the Apparition. Leave, um, probably. We haven't been able to Leave use Carnage? Kunai and Shuriken yet, unfortunately. Uh, I think you Carnage probably just, just take out one of the little guys and then you Cleave so the other one's close to dead. Well, let's see. Does I get Reaper Exhume? Well, we're already close to full health anyway. Although oh, I just yeah. take out both of them. Yeah, that's true. Reaper just to kill the two little ones and exhume it back out. That seems fine. Uh, that's fun. Ooh, and there we are. Yeah, and then throw three attacks down, like Sword Boomerang, Strike, Strike, to get uh, rocks on Kunai and Shuriken. And then... <laughs> um, uppercut, let's see, he's not vulnerable yet, so Thunderclap, Thunderclap, Uppercut. Dang, he does not want me to play three. Sure doesn't. Um, let's see. The cleaves are nice. If you 
if you use the steroid potion, you can kill the little guys with just the two cleaves. Although, uh, if you... I can go okay. strike, so if you strike, s- cleave, cleave, and that'll kill them both because of the um, strength they'll give me. It actually won't because you'll get one strength. Oh, so they'll be at one health. The cleave, and then you'll do 37 total. So probably still a good idea to do the flex potion. I think so. Yeah, so flex... Cleave, cleave. Okay, at this point you can battle trance. Maybe we can see a better cards and strike to play here. Yeah, bash to get more vulnerable down. I'm still get the clock on Kurok and Shuriken and Kuna. Yeah, and I'll probably I'll probably end up killing him next yeah, he's turn. Yeah, probably dead here shortly. Oh, sword boomerang is yeah, gonna do it. Bring it home. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that'll work. Yeah, that'll that'll certainly do it. Yeah, give, <laughs> give me give me that give me that achievement. Oh, Double corruption. demon form? Um, okay. There's no point in taking a second demon form. Okay. Um, if So a second Reaper doesn't do a lot for us because we already have the Exhume. Corruption, I think, because we've got two Feel No Pains, Corruption is amazing. So this is like the situation in which we're retroactively wishing we had Mark of Pain instead of Velvet Choker. Because <laughs> Corruption is like would let us play so many cards but um like corruption plus two feel no pains in play is a pretty stupid mitigation engine that i don't think we can pass on so, so i would grab take corruption. corruption here okay that's fine and we'll just have to like be careful not to play more than six cards per turn um Ooh, Sneko Sneko. pretty tempting so is the cursed key though the, we still get, like, we get curse, like, we get more max HP every time we take a curse. So, five energy per turn is pretty fucking nice with this deck. But we, but we can't play more than six cards. But I, I have a couple, a lot of our several, cards like, cost more than one. Yeah, I have several two and threes. I think I'm going to go with Cursed Key. I think both are very strong relics. You can't really go wrong with either one. I mean, Sneko Eye allows for some super degen stuff. Only at 125 gold, so I don't really want to hit a shop early on. Yeah, we'd like to hit one maybe later in the act, ideally. See what else we got here. So I'm thinking maybe encounter, encounter, question mark, encounter. Uh. Four encounters early isn't great. I mean, we can go through that shop. It's yeah. I mean, we can just we'll have yeah, more might, gold it, by then. Yeah, we might see something good. Oh, this fight, fun. Let's battle trance. See some cards. Uh, feel no pain. Well, no, actually, apparition and then feel no pain because we don't want the. Well, I guess it would have been fine either way. We're only taking two damage. Um, I guess just uppercut one of them. Doesn't really matter too much. And then. Yeah, thunderclap. Yeah, okay. And then orc alchem blocks for us. Mm hmm. It sure does. Orichalcum plus Apparition is pretty nice. It's like really good. Uh, we could... Well, it would take a lot of damage that way. I think we, we want to play the Apparition and we, just, we won't get the proc. Just, uh, yeah, that's a bummer. Carnage but... Cleave. Carnage is the one in front. And Cleave. He'll come back almost certainly, but it buys us a, At low a couple health. of turns of him having to regrow. Yeah. I like demon form double apparition. Uh, excuse me. Three bash is pretty all right. Three bash is pretty good. Yeah. I'd go for this the is, yeah the forty one. That smack the big one with that. Those cleaves are starting to look real good here. Uh yeah. They uh, uh, they sure corruption can. Corruption make something free, as well. Well, it makes the apparition free, for sure. I would play the corruption. So apparition's free, and it already exhausted anyway. Yeah. So now you can just play everything and get those kunai and shuriken procs. Corruption plus feel no pain is like one of the most degenerate things in this game. It's insane. So just like feel no pain. Uh, what's in our exhaust pile? We can just like exhume to get another apparition back even. How about you even check my 
It's the little blue or purple circle there. Yeah, dude, exhum, get an apparition back. Exhum? <laughs> what? Just, dude, just play everything. This game's dumb, dude. Corruption is so ridiculous. Easy. Just throw your deck at him, dude. I think uh, another shrug it off is perfectly fine. Very, very good with corruption. Mm -hmm. Like, stupidly good with corruption. Battle trance first. Just see what we draw. Feel no pain, feel no pain, apparition. Yep, and then uppercut him. Yep. And, and all this other stuff. Free cards we get. Oh, damn. Okay, that's fine. That was definitely... Corruption. See what we get for free. Yeah, I'd just display everything. So, like, even though these... Def like, playing these defends exhausts them so that we don't have to worry about drawing them. Yeah, we won't get them deck. back. Which, I mean, this guy's not going to survive to a second time through the deck anyway. Exhum an Apparition. Yeah, so this is why I like Ironclad so much. Like, this deck, like, Ironclad has the most ways to get absolutely degenerate of any of the classes. It's so, so ridiculous at this point. Yeah, it sure feels like it. Like, we're not, we're not, like, we're not only not taking damage, but we're not even really in any danger. Of would I want to go with Inflame? No, I would skip. You already have Demon Form for Strength, plus... Oh, duh, yeah. Guy. That's a card, like, that's one more card that's not an Apparition on a turn that we care about drawing Apparition. Um, well, I could. Oh no, those are skills. Uh, I could. How far are we from a shop? Because you can take it, that it's first. The, a shop is the next one, so yeah, I could take, grab this. Do, definitely do that one for the max HP, and now we just take it out. Well, hold on, hold on. Look at the options first. <coughs> Don't spend the money until we've seen what we are looking at. Offering is love... really good. Dropkick is bad. Don't play that card. I love. I, love, I, I mean, I'm not gonna pick it. I love Dropkick. Uh, we can't afford offering anyway, though. Um, metallicize is somewhat tempting. Unfortunately, we can't power. We can't remove and metallicize. Um, which curse was it we got again? Look in the deck. It's innate. Yeah, we have to take that out. did his job and got a 6 max HP. Mm -hmm. um, I think we just leave. Rare Relic for fighting a boss from Act 1 sounds like a pretty good deal. Oh, this guy. Top Hat Slime Bro. Top Hat Slime Bro. What's up, man? Are you on your iPad? or uh, did I you switched computer? back. It looks like Discord's working now. Alright, let's do okay. Battle Trance first. Well, we're definitely playing the Feel No Pains. And then just throw down and then a just bunch like of attacks, uh, cleave, sword, boomerang, Oop. and that that'll be our six parts. And we got our proc. Yep. Demon, Demon form, form, right? The apparition's kind of wasted, unfortunately. We would like to have drawn that next turn, but we'll probably draw one next turn as well. Demon form strike. Yeah, I mean. That seems perfectly fine. Good. Let's see. So if we did bash, cleave, strike. So that's 12, and then the strike would be 15, and the cleave would go to... How much is cleave doing right now? 15, so that would go to 22. 22, 37, and then the bash is, what, 12? How much is Bash hitting for yeah. right now? 12. So that would be 49. So he would go to... What is he at right now? 104. So we'd go to 70. That's not a great split. But it's, it would let me uh, Apparition. Apparition, Apparition, uh, Bash. Bash, cle bash Cleave. Yeah, that seems good. Did you want to try to get him... Oh, shit. Uh, Motherfucker. I miscounted the damage from that. No, I mean, um, it's yeah. It's that's fine. not just on you. We're all playing together. Well, it's fine. We'll be okay. Right, that's fine, yeah. That's pretty funny, though. 
Um, you just exhume an apparition and play the other one as well. Uh, I would thunderclap. I think I like Carnage actually. Just get him close to splitting again. Yeah. It's 35 for this split. Okay, that's not bad. Corruption's pretty good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll t whatever. I don't, I don't even need to play off, these. Shrug it off. Um, we, we don't get a proc on Shuriken and Kunai, unfortunately. Uh, I would just hit the one in front and make it split. Which, oh, oh no, never mind. He was doing all right here. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's not bad. Ooh. See what you get off battle trance. Yeah. You'll probably just kill. Not a lot Dang, of look at all, look at all those defends. Uh, you can just sword boomerang and reaper. And his splits for seven. Yeah, that's a. That's a trash split for him, so... Cool. Yeah, you you sure you can't deal with that? I don't know, man. It, was it looked close. Um, I don't think you need snack oil necessarily. Although we do have two dexterity sources. You could probably drop one of them and take the snack oil. You can definitely uh, bail us on certain on some turns. Probably want to get rid of the speed potion, yeah. right? Uh, skip all this. This is trash. Yeah. All right, this is the scariest fight in the game. I Let's... definitely have lost a lot of so, runs. Yeah. Here. So the way that this fight works, the the knives they attack on the first turn, and then they suicide themselves into you for their max HP on the second turn. And then she works like the gremlin leader does, where if she's got, if you've killed her knives off, she's a lot more likely to spend her turn summoning than attacking you. And she attacks for just like brutally unfair amounts of damage. And she can really... have more than two daggers out too, right? Yeah, she can go up to four actually. So let's battle so I'm thinking, trance first. Yeah, battle trance. Ooh, apparitions are going to be really uh, good gonna here. We're going to want a corruption, definitely. Uh, let's feel no pain. Carnage uh, will kill. Just kill the dagger with 21, I think. That's four cards. We get two more. I would play both the apparitions, and then that's the end of our turn. Yep. Okay. Fortunately, we're intangible for this turn. We would be looking at like literally 80 damage otherwise. Um, you can just play everything. Uppercut her. Yeah. There you go. Demon inform cleave strike. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't get a third attack, but we got demon form to play. We're doing all right here. Can't win them all. Uh, I would just exhume an apparition just to get another stack up, and then bash, bash thunderclap strikes. Uh, yeah, uh, feel no pain, apparition strike. I don't think we've played power through even once this entire run. Oh, I haven't. Wait, I've never seen a wound. <laughs> I thought you said this fight was hard, dude. Dang. Well, this deck is kind of strong. That's actually really good for us. That's a oh, good that seems, Yeah, that seems super strong. Impervious is really good with this deck. Gain th oh my god, yeah, alright, taking it. Wait. Evolve yeah. is kind of okay with uh, with power through, but our deck's getting big enough where we're not like super concerned about so, those wounds. So yeah, I'm thinking... I think that's the like, path we want. Upgrade, elite, yeah. Or... Let's look at our deck and see what we would be upgrading. So we have another feel no pain we can upgrade. We can upgrade corruption and get it down to only costing two. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, that's not bad either. Um, 
Exhume goes down to zero, but with corruption, that's not going to matter. Super relevant. Yeah. Corruption upgrades seems fine. When was the last time we took damage? It's been a while, right? When's the last? Oh, this fight. Uh, demon Ooh, form got... on turn one, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like, but. See the battle trance. Eight. It is unfortunate. Oh, like we want to see our apparitions later when he actually starts hitting us. But I think demon form is gonna carry this fight on its own. So upper, um, uppercut sword boomerang three attacks this turn. Yes, sword boomerang strike strike. All right, duh. To get start getting our dexterity up. Yeah, and it's always possible I can exhume an apparition on a turn that like he's gonna yeah. hit me. I just won't use that for now. Oh, I did. Get... I would just do it now, honestly. <laughs> and play both so... both apparitions. Uh, probably bash to get some vulnerable down on it. Um, no point in doing impervious yet. Apparition, um, thunderclap. I don't know if we're scared enough to sniper oil just yet. I think I don't think we are. We're just letting uh, demon form take up. Just apparition, thunderclap. Uh, feel no pain. Corruption seems pretty good. We can definitely throw the apparitions down, and then uh, play the three attacks. We get another dex and strength out of it. Go only play two attacks. Ah, shit. Uh, I guess just cleave strike then. But you know, fine. Whatever. We're hitting pretty hard at this point. Yeah. Oh goody, he does one damage. Where are our attacks at? I just feel no pain. We can shrug it off just to see another card. Ooh. That's a pretty good one to see. We got one more turn of apparition right now. We didn't really want the impervious this turn. Let's shrug it off to draw. Drawing all of our blocks on the turns we don't need them. We just want to tax right now. You know what? I think it's actually time to snack oil to draw some. Snack cards. oil this turn? Yep. We want to be pumping out some damage because he's going to start scaling up. Uh, upper uh, cut four. I sure. can play four cards. Upper cut five sure. Bash carnage. That was pretty good damage. That was pretty, that was pretty okay. solid damage for sure. All right, now I think we're pretty safe in this fight. We can battle trance. Can we kill him this turn? Uh, thunderclap. Th uh, yeah, yeah, just thunderclap and sword oh, boomerang. Well, look, boomerang does 100 damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, sword boomerang. I can't, I can't, like, we're, we're fine. Ornamental fan is really nice. That's going to go well with our feel no pain stuff. I think we can honestly just take another sword boomerang. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, bottled tornado and put demon form in hand one or ooh, or corruption. I think we like demon form in turn one though because of apparitions. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think mystery it hallway does, it doesn't elite. matter. I do. We do want to go to that shop and take out that curse we just got though. I'm good. Nothing me... at all. No, remove uh, a card. Can get rid of that curse. That we can take out. Nice. <sighs> I'm thinking hallway fight elite. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then we hit the shop. Oh, the exploded boys. Okay, that is a lot of damage coming in. Let's battle trance. We should hit an apparition. I think we did. Nope. Uh, we do get to impervious though. I just demon form and impervious. I'm wondering if like we'll take any more damage <laughs> this run. <laughs> Corruption. Yep, 
Yeah, you, you're, you're getting it. You're getting I'm, it. I'm, 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 fi I'm, fi uh, I'm figuring it Carnage, out. I would Carnage one of the explodey guys. Actually, Thunderclap for... Wait, no, we only get one more card play. Uh, Carnage, one of the guys in the back. Because they do explode for a decent amount of damage. Although we have Impervious up, so we're fine. Um, you can definitely play both the Apparitions, and then... Uh, yeah, I kind of like uppercutting the front guy. Because the, the two guys in the back are going to explode, but they're only going to be one because of uh, Apparition. Apparition's pretty good. Yeah, I'm kind of like thinking it was a good idea that we took that uh, took that event. Yeah, I think we probably would have been pretty good anyway. I think but we're, like, yeah, I think yeah. we're fine either way, but this is like just made us ridiculously, Double feel no pain. ridiculously strong. Yeah, to play them both. And then, like, these dazes that they're putting in actually block for us now. Um, flame Barrier and then Strike. Uh, like, double strike the guy in the, uh, the back before he gets to scale up his thorns anymore. Now just pass. Feel No Pain is so good. Yeah, that, like, we're blocking for 28 this turn. Even with that, like, bad hand. Uh, I think you skip. Yeah, we don't need another un upgraded cleave. Oh, what the fuck is this guy? This I guy, definitely have fought um, him before, I just don't I fought him doing before. like a lot of damage and then oh. he will nemesis himself, so like he will apparition himself, so Okay, I do remember this. Him. I think you just uh demon form corruption. I wouldn't even battle trance cuz we don't. Well, yeah, well, I would just rather wait and draw an apparition next turn instead of playing one right now and wasting yeah. it. What is that? Oh, burns? Okay. That apparition's blocking Ooh. for 45 damage this turn. I'll take it! I'll take um, it. Let's see. What? Yeah, just Carnage, Cleave, Strike, Strike. And that way we get a Kunai Shurik and Croc. Apparition's pretty good. It's what? Not, not a bad set of cards. Let's shrug it off, see what we draw. Uh, yeah, Apparition, Sword Memory. Strike. Um, I think you could. Honestly, I would even Reaper just to get the. Yeah, to get the stacks. We can. We can always exhume it. Yeah. If we need it. So he's intangible this turn, right? Yeah. Um, you do. You definitely want the apparition. Let's shrug it off just to draw a card. Hopefully, we draw a third attack. Um, I would just get another apparition out. Like, we're winning the fight as long as we stay intangible for as long as possible. This guy hits like a bitch! Double feel no? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, duh. I mean, all of our cards cost zero, so... Why not? You remember at the start of this run when I said Unceasing Top was bad because we would never play all of our cards in one turn? Yeah, well, you know, mistakes are made. I wish we'd take. Well, also, remember with that with unceasing now, man, top, we, we um totally nuts. We, we couldn't have even bought it anyway. Yeah, like I didn't have enough for it. Just play the flame barrier because he'll hit himself. With oh, his, off of right. Him. Okay. It doesn't matter. He's dead this turn. Yeah, he's de he's he's dead. So. All right. Why not? <laughs> This, the Evolve is kind of cute, like, we do give ourselves wounds, but I don't think it triggers all that often. It's just I was gonna clogging up the deck. I was just skip. I was gonna skip. Like, this deck pretty handily beats the Act Boss as it is. We don't really need much more. I mean... Uh, we're definitely buying the Waffle. Except I was the like, I mean... Is nice. Um... I don't think you need to buy anything else here. Uh, you could I just buy... like I, I just like body slam for the uh, for the artwork. I actually I would buy the block potion just to help us through like an unfortunate turn where we don't have an apparition. Right. Battle trance, demon form, corruption. Yeah, let's see what we get off. The I mean, depending trance. on what the trance. Ooh, yes. Yep. Uh, demon form, corruption, apparition. Yeah. 
I don't think this deck requires much coaching at this point. Uh, I mean, it's always possible I make a misplay and then just get fucking <laughs> annihilated. Um, impervious, yeah. Just a uh, complete flame barrier. Oh, I would. Uh, yeah, I keep I forgetting. Mean, that... I, I, I guess it does exhaust the flame barrier, but it would have done a little damage back. Uh, apparition, yeah. Uh, and then Carnage, the one you just vulnerable. Yeah, because he was scaling himself up. That seems good. Uh, at least play one more strike. Yeah, I mean, you, you play them both, but that gets you a shirk into an eye mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives you that. The fact that we got both of those so early. Getting the extra dexterity out of it is, like, really nice in this deck for the turns that we don't have Apparition. That would be really good on Demon Form for the Time Eater fight. I would um, definitely. I'm gonna get rid Blessing of Blessings of the Forge. Of the forge. Yep, d dump that. We're du we're gonna duplication potion demon form. Take another. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Win will slam. Oh, okay. okay. Dude, like I will win will slam what? demon no uh, feel no pain in a deck that has no exhaust in its entire. Uh, upgrade another feel no pain, I guess, right? Um. Yeah, that seems pretty strong. Okay, duplication right. potion, and then play the demon form. Uh, <laughs> so, you know how this guy works, right? I, I know that every time you play 12 cards, he ends your turn, basically. Right. Yeah. So, we but, I mean, kinda, I can only we, play six Because we're getting turn, six strength a turn, we can kind of chill at the start until we get to the point where we can just shit on him. Um, I would play but I can also attacks trigger... to get the, the relic procs, though. It was horrible sequencing. Well, actually, no, it wasn't because... Um... We don't care about anything except demon form. Like... It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, yeah, we definitely impervious. And then play the... Well, we can't play all three attacks, unfortunately. I would just pass the turn. We're not getting a, a proc. Yeah, we. Game. I just want, just I want me a bit... I want me one of them big boy turns. I would actually big hold off on turns. corruption just... You would do until what? Until the next time you see it, because it is exhausting our block cards. You do want the apparition, apparition in this though. turn. And then play the three attacks. Uh, he's at seven. Um, so if I play, so he'll go to ten. So we'll get two more card plays next turn. That's fine. Yeah, we can always use the block potion next turn if we need to. I'm gonna strike, not Reaper, because I want to so save that. So when he gets to two twenty-eight or below two twenty-eight, he will take a turn to heal himself and cleanse all of his debuffs. Uh, just play the two apparitions, I think. I do remember that happening once because I definitely lost a run because he did that and I did not know. I was like, cool. Um, feel no pain, both apparitions, and then sword boomerang. So next turn he's gonna try and heal himself. Uh, I would just cleave. We can just kill him before, like, on the turn he's healing. We'll just kill him right now. Yeah, this is, this deck is silly. Wait. We actually didn't draw a lethal? Are, Are you, you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Well, That's just amazing. Play the feel no pain, and then pass the turn. There's no point in well, hitting him because he's going to heal himself to half okay. anyway, and we would just be ticking his clock up one. That that would have been foolish. He he. <laughs> My thunderclap is doing 42 do damage. You have a sword boomerang that's going to do a not insignificant amount of damage. Yeah, we didn't take any damage in Act Three, did we? <laughs> when was the last time we actually got hit? I, I think don't it was remember. like it was I before I DC'd because I came back and you guys had half health, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I think it was definitely like pretty much. I think the last time we took damage was like the fight before we took the intangible. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I, I came back and you guys were like, "Looks like we got it." We we hit the nuts. God, God damn, that was a good run. The nuts are just gonna do the nuts things. So, All I needed was yeah. uh. Like, Money this... was gone to tell me every decision to make. This is yeah, why I love Ironclad so much. We didn't even have Dead Branch unlocked. Look at what Dead Branch does, and then tell me that that would have not made this deck even it's not more a real. Nuts. That's not a real relic. Like, that's bullshit. Dead Branch is the best relic in the game. Because that if you have... so okay. stupid. So it's not even from your deck. It's just like no, it a just random adds card. a new one. Imagine if... Okay. Imagine a world where we had Mark of Pain instead of... Uh, the Velvet Choker, 
and we played Corruption. And then every time we play a skill, it exhausts. We, if we had all three Feel No Planes in play, every time we play any skill, it exhausts, gives us a random new card, which could be another skill, by the way. Gives right. us 12 free block, does whatever the card does for zero energy, and then we get a new card that is probably also a skill that gets us 12 more free block for zero energy, and then does what the card says. Like, it's the most degen combo in the entire game. It is, like, I've I've never come even close to losing a run where I had Dead Branch and Corruption. Like, any time those two have come together, the entire rest of the run, it's like, I don't, I don't care about anything anyone's doing anymore. <laughs> I think that was definitely the smoothest run I've ever had. This was per, this was a very 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 strong deck, but that like, was stu- that was you know, that, that was stupid strong. Like you can see, like along at every step of the way, though, like we were always making decisions towards handling like what was coming up, and yeah, by doing so, yeah. like we got rewarded with these insanely strong things that just like that, let that's us something shit I on definitely have a hard fortune time. favors the bold kind of thing. Exactly, like that's how you need to play Slight Aspire, particularly like as you get to higher ascensions, especially like. You just, you have to, like, put your foot on the gas. And, like, you'll lose runs where you just die to Gremlin Knob, but, like, you know, if you didn't do that, you were gonna, like you were definitely going to die to, like, the Act 2 boss because you just didn't get strong enough, you know? All right, good run, guys, good run. That was, GG's. That uh, was a yeah. fun one. That was a lot more fun than the Defect run was last time. I kind of wish I'd seen that, though, because this was like the everything went right, but I really would have liked to have seen that everything went wrong. I'm really glad that I posted the VOD in the mod chat. I'm really glad that like this went the way that it did, too, to like demonstrate a lot of the reasons exhaust synergies are so strong on Ironclad, too. Um, I'll upload this to YouTube and link it in mod chat as well, if you guys want to watch it back, and I'll link it for George. I probably will. For sure. Um, Okay. I guess I'm uh, getting off. I got uh, some other people to meet up with and play games with. All right, um, sounds good for I definitely hope I, ho- I definitely hope I'm able to make it to the next one because that was crazy fun, and yeah, I can't wait to watch someone else play. This game. Uh, I think the only one we haven't done a coach run of yet is Watcher. Which... I need to learn how that character works. That character is so sick looking. I wanna I wanna learn more about it too. So like Watcher is I don't know how they managed to do it, but Watcher is Galaxy Brain and Brain Dead at the same time. It's I don't it's sounds like my character. character. Like, <laughs> the TLDR is, like, you just go into Wrath and then you kill everything. Excellent. All right, I'm getting off, guys. Right, later, that was guys. fun. Right, peace. See you guys.